Josh Coppernell here at MIS. It's raining. I've got Cam and Adam here with me. Cam, Adam, what do you have to say? Um, Venus VK is not very really good. Yeah. Right. So, all right, we're passing by. Me and Elijah, the two Hyper Green Cup champions that came up in this game. We're going to lose all the Parker. Uh, we got we got Mikey, what up? we got Chris, uh, we got Justin, we got Adam, we got Josh. And yeah, we're just chilling for the rain delay. I don't think I can turn my camera around, but uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Um, well, you know, it sucks that we're not watching the racing right now, but uh, just chilling under the stands. I'm enjoying a Rice Krispie treat. Got some coffee. So just kind of chilling right now until we can get some racing back going. But uh, yeah, uh, weather isn't looking too great. We'll see if, uh, if we can get going soon. Hopefully you can hear us over the jet dryers. Probably not. Anyway, we're going to move on to Mikey. Mikey, what are your thoughts on the situation? Well, I mean, this is the second straight race. Uh, the mates followed me uh, for a cup race. Um, at this point, it is what it is, really. It sucks. Um, it sure does, Mikey. All right, Tristan, what are your thoughts on the situation? Well, like Kruger said, it sucks. Uh, sun's peeking through a little bit from uh, Hold Down Hope. We're all standing on the bleachers, but it is uh, sunny a little bit, kind of. So maybe they have some really big uh, jet dryers and they can drive faster. The sun sure is popping out over there. It's not really sun. I mean, it's kind of sun. It's just really light looking clouds. All right, Justin, what are your thoughts on this matter at hand? Nature. I look like a genius for bringing a jacket. Yeah, other than Adam, he's the only one that, other, out of us that brought a jacket on this trip. And so, yeah, it's fun. I'm, I'm kind of soaked right now, but. All right, Adam, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'm sweaty. I'm soaked in the rain. I can't hear anything with the jet dryers and woo NASCAR. Blue NASCAR indeed. All right, Josh, final thoughts on the situation at hand. Well, I think we need a beeper for this man over here who just <laughs> said a word that you can't say on uh, internet or uh, TV. Um, so there's that, but uh, I didn't hear what these guys said, but we still might need a beeper. Anyway, it's a beautiful day here. At, I'm kidding, it's not a beautiful day here in IS, but uh, you know what? We've got a great crowd, great people. Hopefully we're gonna see racing. Blue NASCAR, go Kyle Larson. Yeah, whatever he said. All right. We're all going to sign off from here, but hopefully it'll be a good day. Probably not. We're all going to get hammered probably later. It'll be a good night. Peace out. Hello. It's raining. It's raining. We stole Josh's phone. It's raining pretty good. It's pretty good. Cool. We got, we got Justin and Tristan and Mikey's back there too. They can't hear me. This Mikey. What's your thoughts? It's all rain. It's been raining. It's been rain. Yeah. Pretty cool though. It's wet. It's pretty wet. Let's get you a. Uh... Send him now. Yeah, it's wet. That guy's ran the most laps of anyone else today. It's probably gonna stay like that. So. Hey, I'm Cameron Cowell, and as of April 29th, 2023, I am the all-time wins leader in the Pacific Truck Series, and you're listening to Fastlane. Jonathan Parker now joins us on Fastlane. Jonathan, you won Saturday's Blockbuster 200 in the in the, in the Pits News Truck Series. We didn't catch up with you post-race. A little bit of mixed emotions, I believe, behind the wheel of the 81 truck taking that victory. <laughs> mixed emotions everywhere. <laughs> that was crazy. I didn't expect uh, beef to to really stem from that race. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know where to start. Um, I'll, I'll just start from the beginning. It was a mistake. Uh, you're welling myself to start from the back because um, I qualified at Rockingham because I want to get at least one pole this season. So the, the rest of the next two races I do, I'll probably start from the back too. But <laughs> Charlotte, it's so hard to pass because everyone's going the same speed and you're barely lifting. But I found a way about halfway through to get to the front. And um, Mikey did one whale, whale of a job getting ahead of me at the beginning of the last run. We were side by side for like 10 laps. And eventually, I just decided it wasn't even worth it. I'll just let him drive whatever pace he wants. I'll drive the pace I want. And 
the crossover came a lot sooner than the past happened. It would happen like five or so laps after I let him go, but it was just so hard to pass, and I didn't want to show him the top until the end. So I just sat there and cooked my tires until the end, and then chaos broke out, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of chaos um, at the end. You mentioned uh, it was really exciting for the three of us up in the JCTV booth to call the end of it because it was a th classic finish, uh, like we kind of talked about a little bit after the race uh, on the stream. But you and I talked briefly, and we kind of compared it to something like the 2018 Chicagoland race or an Xfinity race on a mile and a half. So just something from old days where they just ran the guy down just hounded him for the last 10 laps and that's what you did on michael kruger just sat right there and just waited for the time to pounce yeah so the last 10 laps that's when i decided to go to the top uh, i learned that a few weeks ago when officials was here even in the trucks the top really really works and you actually don't really cook your tires so i didn't really want to do that until the end i don't want to show anyone up there a little bit but you could run that the whole run honestly um, but I didn't want to show that till the end, and it c became very apparent that as I'm riding behind him, I'm like, yeah, no, the bottom's not really, I'm not going to be able to get a run on him. So I shot to the top, and I got a couple runs within that 10 laps before the lap trucks come up, but I just didn't want to take it because I knew he was going to block it, and I didn't want to move him with, like, seven to go because that gives him too much time to just come right back and <laughs> move me out of the way, I guess, but... Um, yeah, bringing up the lap trucks, um, that was a topic, uh, at the, after the race, but, um, I think not everyone's calmed down. I'm, lap trucks didn't really do anything wrong. Um, they're just kind of held their line and they have every right to be there. Uh, I usually, when I'm a lap car, I just kind of get out of the way, but you don't have to do that. Um, they did nothing wrong, but he, he gave Mikey his line which actually screwed me when i was running the top and you saw this and you noted this because when he started moving up to give mikey his line i was like crap i'm never gonna get a run if mikey just stays behind danny it was danny it was the lap guard danny saponsky i was like he's never gonna if he doesn't get around him i'm never gonna get around on him again because the dirty air just made me plow but uh we got around him and then literally i think the lap we got around him i ran the top gonna run on mikey and that's when I was on the inside, and he chopped me a little bit, and we made a little bit of contact and let me get beside him. Um, final two laps, um, well, I guess coming to the white, I cleared him, and then he used the AstroTurf. The AstroTurf's basically like driving on asphalt. I don't I don't know if that's very realistic, but it kind of is like driving on asphalt. It doesn't slow you down or change your grip at all, really. As long as you don't jump in the air, nothing really changes. So he was able to do that and get back underneath me. Um, I pinched the heck out of him, but he just drove it in super hard into one, and I knew he was going to do that, so I lifted a little bit, and off the corner, I was able to stay beside him, and then uh, when we were side drafting, I came down, and I doubt he even really wanted to come up, because when you're side drafting people, the person who's getting side drafted gets sucked to the dude side drafting, so he probably didn't even mean to come up. The air just kind of probably sucked him up into me, and it was a little bit of net code, and then wow that that <laughs> that wreck was interesting because Kerfield probably should have won that after we made contact but uh mikey didn't have control of his truck and then poor poor alex got, got the worst of that and um i was having some internal conflicts i didn't even know if i wanted to win the race at that point <laughs> so i was made the finish closer than i wanted to be but um i crossed the finish line at first and <laughs> um I'm very happy that JCTV got that finish. You guys have been, did such an awesome job, and it was an electri it was electrifying. It was it really reminds me of those few races in 2018 that were really exciting. Like I remember Indy also being really exciting at the end, but brought up Chicagoland too. Um, I'm one that really holds on to 2018 very fondly, a lot more fondly than others. So I when I compare it to that, it's not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. So. It gave me that kind of warm, electrifying vibe that I really loved. So um, I appreciate. I, I'm. It's honestly an honor to have a finish like that on this uh, channel. Y'all have so many races, and for that to be top two and probably not number two on that list of great finishes is awesome. I agree. It's one of the best finishes, if not the best we have seen 
on JCTV and right when the race ended we were saying it was probably the best in the pits race we had seen in a long time because it like Dawson Allen said on the call it was a blockbuster of a race and a blockbuster of a finish uh, take me back to the beginning of the race that you mentioned the uh, starting in the back everyone running the same speed but right at the start of the second stage there was quite a big incident with Justin Duran, Tristan Maher, Josh Koppel got involved in it his night what did you think of that crash because you were pretty much right in the middle of it unfolding yeah, it happened right in front of me, and once Justin got the wall, the four really didn't have anywhere to go, and when he got turned, I mean, I saw it coming from a mile away. As soon as Justin got the wall, I'm like, "This, that's a wreck, because uh, they were just too close, so I started lifting pretty early. If I didn't lift pretty early, I would have got in it, so it's little things like that, little situational awarenesses that completely change races. If I didn't see that, I would have been wrecked, but so I saw that, and I just, I mean, when Tristan got turned, I mean, the two JCTV trucks, I mean, I split them, and oh my gosh, that was actually kind of a blast now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, I feel bad for those guys. There's a lot of a lot of trucks, a lot of good trucks got took out in that. I feel pretty bad about that, but yeah, it's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, but I got through it, and some were pretty lucky to get through it, and pretty good to get through it, like Canfield, and some weren't like Josh. Um, you just couldn't get through it there, but yeah, it was definitely a parking lot for sure. Well, like we mentioned, you're able to somehow avoid it and go on to get the victory. Your second win on the season in your limited starts this year. How much confidence does that bring you into a place like USA, someplace we haven't even gone to yet? Um, honestly, the tracks are so different. I just, yeah doesn't really do much but i just usually take it one race at a time anyway and uh, you know i i've had such bad luck some my own doing over the past couple of weeks some not my own doing um and <laughs> i'll start on nashville fairgrounds i don't even want to go over that that was embarrassing uh just wrecked myself and then the next day at rockingham i probably the best truck and just kind of wrong place wrong time got wrecked and then at at Texas, I finished uh, I finished second with a <laughs> up race car. It should have should not have finished second, uh, but yeah, yeah, I got caught up in a wreck on lap eleven and got too much damage really to compete for the win. But salvaged something out of that, and then I guess I had my fortress turn uh, Saturday night pretty well. So um, that's how racing is. It's just kind of ebbs and flows like that. Sometimes you have things go your way, sometimes you don't. So uh, hopefully. Hopefully things are a little back to normal for me uh, after Charlotte and we can go to USA. And um, I'm going to be starting from the back there too. And I just got to try and make it make it through, honestly. Because uh, way too many calls just hit these short tracks. So I know, know that race, it's going to be pretty tough to move through the pack. Because I'm probably not going to have a lot of green flag chances to make moves through the pack. So probably going to have to take advantage of some tire strategy. Be a little shifty with that. But I'll find a way. I'll, I'll try to. I only I have limited starts to get that wins record that I really want. He's <laughs> limiting me in the starts that I could do to get that record. And they already had a head start on me, so that's already bullshit. And the limited starts, I mean, I get why, but it's also bullshit because now I can't, you know, shoot for that record. So I got to I gotta win the next two races, basically, if I want to get that and kind of not really secure it because Mikey could, of course, go out there and win three or four more races. This season, he's that good, but uh, I, the most I could do is try and win those races to get get that wreck and kind of keep it for until next season. So um, I am excited for USA, though. I'm Jonathan Parker, driver of the number 48 Lowe's Cobalt Tool Chevrolet, and this is Fast Lane on JCTV. Cameron Caldwell joins us on Fast Lane, driving the number 12 for Radius Racing. Slotted six before we start the In the Pits News playoffs for season four. Cameron, former champion, but you've had pretty much a rough, rough stretch this season, not getting fantastic results, but you still have a win. Um, we do have the one win. Obviously, wish there were a few more, but um, yeah, it's it's been a solid season, I think. Um, just kind of quietly been there. My biggest problem has been not being able to get many stage points. 
Um, if I were to able to get stage points, I would definitely have been more in the hunt for the regular season championship at Talladega. So um, that's, I think, my main focus on something to turn around for the season. But um, yeah, it's it's been a been a good season. I think I feel like my uh, pace has been better than it in my championship season. Like if, I think it always has been really like we've all we've all had to get better since then. But um, like I, I feel like my season has gone better than that one in comparison to other people. So I feel pretty strong about my chances for sure. Yeah, obviously you have the win at IOP and a bunch of second place finishes, but there hasn't been a lot of consistency with getting to you other than completing every lap in the regular season. It's just hasn't been consistent in the top 10, in my opinion, from watching in the booth. There's been some small mistakes on the track and that's not, you're not the only one, of course, but 17th at Texas, 17th at Kansas and Talladega. But like I mentioned, the top twos and then top fives throughout majority of the early parts of the season, like you mentioned, just not getting off the playoff points. It's going to be challenging climbing up from six, I think, in the playoffs, but it's going to be pretty tight, I think, starting off at Pocono. What's going to be the biggest challenge this Saturday night, racing the points? Yeah, um, the biggest thing I'm worried about is honestly my lack of experience at Pocono. Like, we've only ran here once, which we did last season, and I was basically taking a connection or contention on, like, lap six. I think I finished the race, but my truck was too damaged to really do anything. So um, definitely going to need some practice for sure. And it's hard to get practice unless you have other people to practice with because it's such draft heavy there that there's really no point of practicing on your own unless you've like absolutely never driven laps there before. Um, yeah, this first round is going to be pretty tough, I think. Um, I think the points are pretty tight from about really second through seventh, like second through seven is only separated by six points. So it could really get jumbled pretty quickly. Um, but certainly no one's like invincible in the sense of like, everyone could have a bad race and then be in trouble. Like even Mikey, who pretty much dominated the regular season, he's only 28 points or he only has 20 bonus points, which is 21 points above the cut line. So, um, yeah, it's it's definitely gonna be interesting. Um, and then Bristol, as the next race, will be something too. I think I didn't get to run there last season. I don't think I ran there the season before either. Uh, actually, I did, but last season I didn't, so I'm a little out of practice there. So, kind of like you said, for me, it's gonna be really focusing on minimizing mistakes. Uh, I think making sure I don't put myself in bad situations. Uh, Trying to be smart. No, and I'm racing for points rather than kind of going balls to the wall. Um, but, you know, we're excited to see how it plays out. I think once you get to Kentucky, which isn't one of my strongest tracks, I feel okay there. I think I ran fourth there last season. So once I get to Kentucky, I'll probably feel better about where I'm at, assuming I'm not like two or behind or anything. So, uh, yeah, these first two will be a little stressful, though, I think, for me. One thing I brought up there, you were very proud to – accomplished during the regular season was completing every lap how satisfying was that to do especially at the he was of a Talladega doubleheader yeah um that was about all I had going for me at the Talladega doubles making sure I was able to finish all the laps but yeah it was a pretty cool accomplishment um honestly if I didn't have that going for me I'm not sure if I would have ended up at, ended up actually racing IRP and obviously I ended up winning IRP I was on vacation and I had a pretty i don't want to call it crappy but compared to what i have at home it was a pretty crappy setup and uh obviously the the way the cautions flew in that race helped i definitely didn't have winning pace but um it certainly will help in the playoffs having those five extra bonus points from winning the race so um yeah it's really cool i'm hoping i'm able to continue that streak of just go through the whole season finishing every lap uh kind of what i said in the last question though i'm a little worried about pocono because i got taken out pretty early in bristol you know it's short track and we don't have the best uh history on short track so hopefully i'm able to survive those two and after that i think i'll be okay but you know this 
complete all laps and go down in any race. You know, like that shit can be over any race. Obviously, gonna have higher chances of ending at like say Bristol, but one mistake and it's gone. You know, so um, I'll probably have that in the back of my head, even though it doesn't mean anything. It's like if I finish all the laps, then I'm probably finishing okay. So that's, I guess, they kind of go hand in hand in some aspects. So that'll be something to keep in mind for sure for me. Well, the third race in that round is going to be Chicagoland. So, what do you think about heading there? Um, I like Chicagoland. We did race there last season. Um, it was kind of a strange race for me. I remember this one very vividly because it has still kind of left me scratching my head as to what was going on. But the first stage, we were all packed together, and at the end of the straight, at the end of the stage, I was really making up time on the leaders. And a few more laps, I probably would have won the stage. I think I probably finished like fifth or sixth on the stage maybe fourth but after that we kind of spread out and once we were spread out i just lost all my pace it's like it's really strange because in the clean air i was just killing my tires but in the dirty air i was able to save them a lot better which seems like it should be the opposite but um definitely gonna have to work on that but i do like chicago and it's one of my better tracks for sure so as long as i can survive bristol and pocono i think i'll be able to have a good run at chicago land and advance but you know time will tell i guess so you mentioned michael crew having the point lead after his strong regular season he's got a little bit of a buffer but looking at your nine other competitors all your teammates included who do you think is going to be the most fierce competitor maybe a long shot someone we haven't really spoke a lot about this season can be a surprise looking at the playoff standings going forward I think you can make a case for just about anyone here. Um, obviously, Mikey, like I said, and like you just said, he had a really good regular season. Um, but I have kind of been preaching this the last few weeks. We've had a lot of parity, I feel like, this season. Like, I feel like we can go into every race weekend and not really have an idea of who's a favorite. Um, so, like, two wins so far is the highest anyone has, and that's among one, two, three, four, five different drivers. So, you know, that kind of set the tone. Because, you know, last season we had John the Parker winning five races, I think. So he kind of ran away with it. But um, yeah, I think it's really up to anyone. Um, if I had to put a name on it, I'd say Alonzo's definitely one to look out for. Um, Ethan, I think, is too. He's just got to probably get some things together, be a little bit more mistake free. Um, but again, I think. Anyone here could surely make it out of the first round. It's probably going to have to be some bad luck involved for some guys. But um, even Brett, like I feel like Brett could... I don't want to say he'll be a threat necessarily, but I think he could surpri- surprise some people, especially after last time winning his first league race. He's got that momentum now to carry. So, uh, yeah, I don't think you can throw out anyone yet. Um, so it's definitely going to be pretty exciting, I think, for the fans and even us to watch for. Yeah, I agree, Cam. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch from up in the booth to call with a couple of my good pals up there in the JCTV booth. It's going to be very dramatic. And I think one thing that's going to be exciting, some news came this last week. I don't know how much you want to show here on the program, but some big things heading forward for the Blazers Sim Racing League. Yeah, uh, we announced the that the... Uh, Trucks tile sponsorship is changing uh, from next season onwards to Ames Oil, the motor oil company. Really excited about that. Um, it's been a great run for these first four seasons within the Pits News and even before that when the series was under the Galaxy banner. But um, we decided to move forward and we had a connection that had another connection with Ames Oil and we took it. Um, so really excited about that. Um, definitely going to be strange not calling it the Nipitz News Trucks next season, but that'll be something to a little bit of a learning curve, I guess. But yeah, looking forward to it. I think we got some exciting things coming next season. Um, the schedule will be announced at the end of the season, like, as it always is on the JCTV broadcast at Auto Club. So make sure to look out for that. But um, I think we just got finalized in the last day or two. So it's going to be really exciting. I think uh, some new things for sure. Um, 
hopefully going to be our best season yet. Coming off of a good season, good season this season so far. Um, hopefully, we'll get it even better. All right, thank you, Cameron. Talking about season five for BSO, but of course, focusing for the season four in the Pitts News Truck Series playoffs. We're going to be watching Saturday nights at seven forty-five right here on JCTV. Thanks, Cameron. Yep. Thanks, Adam. Fastlane, a JCTV podcast, is sponsored by Faces, the National Craniofacial Association. Hello, I'm Brett Bennett, driver of the number 47 SBLD Ford F-150, and you're listening to Fastlane, a JCTV podcast. Seven laps to go. Tucker right there. Give him a bumper. He's all over him. If caution comes out now, it'll be about a two-run shootout. Here comes Tyler Tucker for the race lead. Michael Kruger, Kruger to the four. third. Here comes the 41 of Michael Kruger to the inside of Dan Cruz. Drama here in the Michael Kruger is very good at this track. I saw him in practice. Red a block and hard. And then beat that in qualifying. How many, how many to go? Hard. I can't read it. Super Five laps out. to go. Caution is out. The caution flag flies. It's Nate White. Will that be it? We that is it. We have a one lap shootout. They took the line with five to go to get the yellow flag. Ladies and gentlemen, history has been made. Let's go. It's Mickey Mouse, Brittany Bennett. What the <laughs> TV win? It's still not a JC TV win. It's still. You, take him how I can you get him. just lost to Brittany Bennett. Oh god, if I don't wreck Tucker here, are we gonna get two to go here? He's basically no. It, went the, no. it is it went, over. It said two to green for a split second and then went back to pacing. It's, it's like, Jover. Mickey Mouse wins. Nobody has yeah, B. Kruger. Hey, what's up? Funny. Brent D. Bennett will take the yellow flag and will come around <laughs> to win the Music like City Melee at Nashville no for his first. Puts. Career win. <laughs> I just threw don't, one pull, right don't pull a Mark Martin now. Don't pull a Mark Martin. <laughs> I'm entering the pits. <laughs> As he Wait, comes through three is, and this four. Is TV, TV history. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Brett Bennett is a race winner for the first Ooh. time. Whoa. No, Doesn't burn out in front of field and wreck everybody. That would have been cooler if it was. Um, under, Under green, green, it would have been a lot better, but you know, no, hey, people don't, people don't really discount. They don't ask how. People don't, don't discount Taylor how. Earnhardt's yeah. Daytona 500 win because of his under caution. I don't think Kruger was do. on the wrong strategy either. If that went green, Kruger was probably going to win yeah, that I, shit. Yeah, it was no, really hard. Was, it was so hard to pass that entire race. Hey, when you're blocking. Nice oh, conflict. <laughs> As he burns it down on the front stretch, Brett Bennett finally, finally. I'm surprised he didn't wreck it because he doesn't know how to do burnouts. Never oh, mind. He there he is. He wrecked it twice. Oh, he hits the wall again. Happy birthday, Brett and... D. Bennett. It's not his birthday. It's not his birthday. Yeah. yeah. But he is <laughs> a race winner for the first time in his career in a league race. Uh, we will totally not mention this tomorrow night on the Slide Job Racing League broadcast because why would we? We've mentioned Dane Cruz, we've mentioned Michael Kruger winning win. it, but we will not mention Brett D. Bennett winning it. He's lost. He does not get to victory lane. As Brett he continues to look around looking, dude. No, you can't drive through Kruger's lane. pit box like that. Brett Bennett has failed post-race inspection. You see him making his way to that victory circle. We'll take a look at your finishing results Whoa. here. I was backing up to get the victory lane. Red How Bennett are you this bad again to victory lane? Scores the victory. Tyler sucks. Tucker with the random fantasy bonus in second. The Dane Cruz rounding out top three. Michael Kruger brings it home in fourth. History hey, was made here tonight. Brett, you did it. You finally won a league race. How, what's the feeling? I am very happy right now. <laughs> wow, what a lane. Wow, is that wow. all you have to say? Wow. <laughs> Is that all you have to say? <laughs> Dude, Michael Loft trips his way finally He's to a win. All that's all you have to say. <laughs> America, 1776. We're the, we are the champs. Well, alrighty, that is Brett D. Bennett. Somehow, someway, the race winner here in the court. Yes, to Motorsport Truck Series buy race. Buy a lottery ticket oh, right now. Buy, yeah, <laughs> buying all the lottery, lottery tickets ticket. right now. 
Brett Bennett, driver the number 47 for SBOD Racing, makes the season for ITP and playoffs. Brett, being lone driver for SBOD, how satisfying is it to make the playoff this season ahead of some of your teammates and against some really strong competition this year? Yeah, it was felt really good to finally actually make the playoffs and not choke it away at the last moment and actually do what I wanted to do in, in terms of my final races leading into it. Um, last couple of years, I usually end up having some bull crap happen to me in the final race or I can't race in the playoffs or whatever that knocks me out. So it was good to not have that happen this year. So what's the mindset heading into these playoffs going off of five straight top 10 finishes, including the two races at the Talladega doubleheader where you ended up leading 16 laps in the second race, uh, ended up on the podium there uh, a couple weeks ago? Yeah, I think the momentum right now is with me. I've had a lot of really good runs lately. I mean, Kansas, I really should have won that race. I think I probably could have won Dega if I hadn't if I hadn't been in a situation where it wasn't worth risking for the points. Um, even that first race at Dega, I was in a really good spot until um, everybody wrecked on that last lap. Um, and then we're going into a set of tracks that I'm strong at. I feel pretty good at Pocono. I got a top five last season, and I honestly feel like I've gotten better at. And I might have a chance to win at if things fall right. I don't think I'll probably be the fastest truck. I never am, but I can easily get a good finish there. Um, Bristol's a track where. I usually have decent speed at. I just almost always get. I've almost always gotten wrecked out at. So, but then again, I've entered that race every year in the playoffs with my mindset being to be aggressive the entire time instead of racing for points. So, and then Chicago lands a track that, who knows what's going to happen. So that's probably not my strongest track, but we'll have a decent run there. So we'll see if we can get through and move on to the next round and see what falls from there. So. Well, you say Chicago Land's not your best track, uh, and it's still quite a ways away out right now, but you have three podium finishes this season, all of them being third places, and two of them were on mile and a half tracks. Can you carry anything over from those two races into Chicago? I mean, I there's parts of it that you can. Um, I don't know why Chicago Land. I just don't think I run as strongly as I usually do at Charlotte or Kansas. Both Charlotte and Kansas. Charlotte, I'm good. Charlotte, I kind of figured out running C fix this past year, and maybe some of that will carry over to Chicagoland. But Chicagoland, to me, finds in that weird mid mid range between Kansas and Charlotte, where it's not top dominant like Kansas. You can't like make multiple lanes work like Kansas, but you can't. It's not tire dependent like Charlotte, so it's kind of falls between the two, and I sometimes struggle with that. So. I, I, the momentum is good. I've had some good runs at mile and a half this year, and hopefully we can go out and get another good finish there. But we'll see what happens. It's it's still wilds out. So the hope is to to stock up the points at Pocono and Bristol and put myself in a situation where I don't have to go into that race needing to have a great result. Even better would be if I go out and win Pocono or go out and win Bristol. I think Pocono is probably the best chance, but we'll see. That that race I think is going to get interesting. I think. I don't think we're going to have a race like last year where it ended up being a long run race. I think more likely we're going to have a, if we get a caution in that second stage, it's going to turn into a lot of restarts because turn one there is sketchy on restarts and people are going to be aggressive. So we'll see what ends up play, how that ends up playing out. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Well, we mentioned all the possibility to get through the next round of the playoff into the round of seven. But do you have a set goal for this season uh, where if you don't make it, it would be a disappointment? Or is just qualifying for the playoff good enough for that 47 truck? Uh, it's going to be, like you mentioned, a lot of long road to get there and need to score points or get a win. Because uh, you're starting this playoff uh, right now 10th in points. Yeah, um, I mean, my goal is to win the championship. Like, that's what I want to do. I mean, I'm not going to be disappointed if I get less than that. I've had a good season. Um, number one goal is really to put the 47 into victory lane. It's been too long of a time um, with that. So I've been getting closer and closer, and I think hopefully the breakthrough is going to come in the next couple of weeks. Um, finally got a league win last night, and now moving into today, going to hopefully keep building on that momentum because I've just had a lot of good results lately. I feel like I'm racing the best I ever have. So 
hoping I can get at least get the victory lane and then we'll see how far we can take it. I mean, I have a lot of tracks I'm good at in both rounds. I feel very confident at Dover and Atlanta, and I feel very confident at Auto Club. So Kentucky and Chicago are the only two playoff tracks I don't feel 100% confident at. So then again, it could be completely different. Who knows? <laughs> well, you mentioned that league when you had early in the week uh, coming at Nashville Fairground Speedway. Uh, very monumental occasion, like you mentioned, first league win. Is that any, obviously trying to carry the, that momentum into slide job at Daytona, but can you carry that momentum into the In the Pits News Truck Series? That obviously a much different track that we're starting off at this weekend, but a league win's still a win, and it's still the same vehicle. Well, I wish we'd go, I wish we'd go to, I wish we'd go back to the fairgrounds. I think that track got hurt by the way that race played out, not by the track itself. And I think that track's better than the super speedway. Um, but I think, I think the momentum helps. I mean, I don't, I don't think I was the best truck in the race I won. I think I just played the strategy, right. But, but you put yourself in positions to win and then you see what happens. And that's going to be the goal throughout the playoffs. All right, well, we're going to be watching, of course, Saturday night, 745 right here on JCTV to see if that 47 can end up in victory lane. I know I'm going to be cheering to see that happen just to see the meltdown from Dawson in the booth alongside me. Yeah, no, that that's the real goal is to make Dawson lose his crap every time. Should have had it at Kansas, but obviously, I if I remember right, Dawson wasn't in the booth for Kansas, which is why I just couldn't win that race. All right, thanks for, for joining this episode of Fastlane. Good luck in the start of the playoffs this weekend. And like I said, we're going to be watching uh, for that 47 to end up in victory lane. And uh, it's going to be fun to watch the rest of the season unfold. Yep, thank you. Fastlane is also sponsored by Spooky Games. Check them out in Attleboro, Massachusetts, or online at spooky-games.square.site, or on their Facebook today. Links are in the description. Joining me now on fast lane is Alonzo Chicano, driver of the 25 for Radius Racing, third in the playoff points going into the first race at Pocono this weekend. So Alonzo, Pocono, check, we've only been to once previously. Your expectations for Saturday night? Uh, it's going to be a fun one. I feel like uh, the short runs are going to be very draft dependent, and then once we get a long run in, it's it's going to be important to have good track position and uh, be able to have good pace and take care of your tires. Uh, we've only, you know, been there once, like you said, but, uh, last, last time we were there, um, I remember running pretty good. I, I think I actually got accidentally spun by my teammate while I was in the, in the lead, I believe. So, uh, hopefully we can get back into the lead at some point and not get spun this time. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, it goes a little bit better to plan for uh, yourself. Looking uh, at the points right now, Alonzo, like I mentioned, you're third going into the reset, but you haven't had a lot of momentum recently, some kind of rough results in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but you do uh, have 11 top 10 finishes this season. Uh, is that something to hang your head on this season? And, of course, you had such a strong podium streak to start off the year. Yeah, I feel like any time we, we don't have bad luck and just get caught up in the things that we have been running good. We've had pace just about everywhere we've been to. Um, you know, it, we just have had a little bit of bad luck, especially uh, lately. Um, unfortunately, hopefully we can turn that around now that we're restarting or kind of resetting the points in a way and, and starting the, the playoffs. Hopefully the bad luck goes away. But yeah, I feel good about how we've been running this season. Uh, we've definitely had top five speed in just about almost every track we've been to, including some of the um, uh, road courses we've even run pretty good at, which we usually don't. So we've had good speed, just got to keep it clean and and avoid getting into other people's mistakes. 
So yeah, you mentioned Pocono this weekend. Uh, looking forward to it, but the other two races in this round of 10 with the point reset. Uh, a lot of guys very tight right there. You're only five points above, but the other two races being Brewster right there in the middle and Chicagoland to be the cutoff. Uh, what are you looking forward to this entire round and expectations with everyone being right here on the reset? I'm really hoping to go into Chicagoland being... Uh, having a much bigger lead above the cutoff, if not hopefully having a win at either Pocono or Bristol. Uh, Chicagoland has very has been very up and down for me. Um, I believe the first time we ran there, uh, I think I won the race um, or did really good. And then the second time uh, we went there, I remember not being competitive at all and like really struggling. So. I'm not sure how we're going to be this time. Hopefully it's not as bad as last time, but I'd like to be in a position where we're going into it being safe and not having to worry about points. But there are three very different tracks. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you have the Tricky Triangle of Pocono, which is three completely uh, different corners. Uh, you got short track, uh, short track at Bristol, which... Every single short track we've been to so far this season has been absolute chaos. So you never know what's going to go, uh, what's never, what's going to happen there. But we've also been running really good at short tracks as well, and uh, got the win at USA, and also was competing for wins at the other short tracks as well. So hopefully we can run well there. And then, like I said, Chicago Land is a mile and a half that could possibly go either way for me. You bring up your win on the season uh, at USA, very chaotic race around you, uh, throughout the field. Is there one race this season that stands out in your memory that you kind of feel like you wish you had back? A lot of guys that I've already uh, interviewed this week have uh, brought these up themselves. Is there something on your mind, or is that just something you kind of forget about and try and focus on the future? Um... I, I feel like we were in contention to win maybe like four or five times this season. Uh, two of the biggest ones, I would say uh, Homestead and Kansas. Um, Homestead, Homestead, we were we had the speed. We just didn't really get any track position until too late into the race. And then by then, um, I was battling my teammates running two and three wide and we let Michael Walls go, and, and by the time I got clear of my teammates, he was already too far gone. I feel like if it was a head-to-head -head and I would have gotten clear sooner than that, I would have probably competed for a win there. And then Kansas, I feel like we were also just in a, in a great position uh, to win there until the caution came out. So that really wasn't so much more um, anything different. I could have done. I think it was just the timing of the caution was really bad. And then it all went kind of downhill for me after that. So um, those are the two tracks that I look back at and be like, man, if things could have maybe gone a little bit differently, we would be here with maybe three wins instead of just one. So uh, it always sucks to, to miss out on those. But... Uh, that you know, anytime you get an opportunity to, to sneak out a win, maybe that you feel like you might not deserve, you got to take advantage of those too. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, those suck, but at the same time, you know, we just got to move on. So, looking at the playoff grid right now, 10 drivers separated by 24 points. Uh, this is another question I've asked pretty much everyone, and this can go either good or bad. But who do you think is going to be the biggest surprise of the playoff, whether they don't make it out of the first round or they shock us up in the booth on JCTV on making it maybe to the championship? Is there anyone, one of your competitors, anyone in mind that is going to be a, a surprise here in the playoff? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have to say, I mean, looking at the playoff standings right now, Tristan Maher is all the way down in seventh. And even though... We're, it's a really tight grid right now. Him being in seventh is is kind of uh, really amazing to me because he he runs so much better than that. Um, you know, sometimes he has some some things that don't allow him to finish races, but 
I feel like during the playoffs, as long as he can uh, be there in the end, he's going to be competing just about every week. And uh, he's one of the favorites to make the Final Four uh, for sure. So him being at seven is is kind of uh, surprising. Um, another one I look at is uh, Michael Walls. He's in fourth. And... Yeah, he has a a few wins, but he hasn't been as super consistent. Um, I I really want to root for for this guy, but sometimes he makes a lot of bonehead mistakes, and that can lead to him not finishing too great sometimes. So if he can be more consistent, uh, then yeah, you know he can for sure maintain that that top four position. But uh. He, He's been super up and down all season long, so it'll be interesting to see how long he, he lasts here in the playoffs. All right, Alonzo, just seven races remaining. Any one specific track on the calendar that's left that you're looking forward to the most to add another win in the column? Man, that's that's tough. I mean, I for sure want to win an auto club, um, obviously, not just because it's the last race of the season, hopefully we're in the Final Four and competing for the win. But it's just such a fun track. Um, I have always enjoyed racing at Auto Club. Uh, not just in I racing, but even, you know, since I was a kid uh, playing NASCAR 06 um, or NASCAR 07 when it was California Speedway. Uh, for some reason, I just always really enjoyed that track. And uh, then when they changed the the walls to blue for some reason it just always stood out it was just always a track that i really uh thought was uh appealing to look at for whatever reason so um it's got multiple lanes it's a very competitive track it's another one of those that you have to take care of your tires but also uh you know you can it allows you to to make passes and in many different ways, so I'd really like to win there. Um, hopefully, we're in the final four and we can compete for that championship. But if I had to pick one of, of these final few races, that's that's the one for sure. Not a bad pick for every reason you pointed out there. Uh, hopefully, like you mentioned, we're going to be seeing you out on the racetrack in the championship contention that night, October twenty eighth right here on JCTV to see the conclusion of this, these playoffs. But uh, Alonzo, thank you for joining us on Fast Lane tonight, and uh, good luck here at Pocono Raceway at Saturday, on Saturday for the opening round of these uh, In the Pits News Season 4 playoffs. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate you having me on. Joining me now on Fast Lane is Ethan Fonseca Moreno and Michael Kruger. They sit first and second currently in the In the Pits News Truck Series playoff standings as we enter the first race of the playoff at Pocono Raceway. I'll uh, start off with Mikey. A couple of race wins this season. Uh, uh, it's been pretty interesting to see everything kind of shake up around you. 13 top 10 finishes, pretty impressive. Going into this playoffs, you got a little bit of a cushion to the cut line. What's it feel with the ment mentality going into this first season with elimination style playoff? Uh, for me, I'm just going to take it one race at a time, really. I mean, with it being elimination style, you never can be sure if you can really, like, make it round by round. And um, I'm just going to have to take it one race at a time here and can't look too far ahead, even though I'm the points leader heading into the playoffs with all those bonus points. Um, I um I mean we've seen it in the past in real life like guys like Kevin Harvick like completely fumble chase or uh, leads in the playoffs away and get knocked out when they had a clear path in and I just gotta just keep out of, of mistakes or avoid wrecks and just make the wise call that keeps me um, good on points even though I have a big cushion to rely on but it's best not to use it early but to kind of just like save it best for later if not just keep it that way Ethan uh, you're, like I mentioned you're second in the points but you only have a six point cushion to the elimination line before we start the playoffs so are you worried about that going forward or are you, are you just under the same mentality if I crash in Pocono or some other race whatever's next coming up yeah but uh, 
No, I'm just going to be aiming my way to the front, pretty much. Um, uh, going as aggressive as I can. Um, probably doing some wild moves out there, but uh, I feel pretty good recently. So I don't see myself being outside of the top five in pace or anything. So um, really, I'm, I'm more focused into going into the final round rather rather than getting by these rounds one by one. And I think. Um, this is probably gonna be my last season. I don't know, but um, gonna have to go for that championship. You know, look forward um, ahead of these rounds, and you know, do my best try to win some races here. Well, in the last six races, you have four top fives, uh, so a lot of momentum heading into the playoff. Uh, does that give you more desire, like you mentioned, just to put your head down and run for this championship? Yeah, I mean. I'm going to do whatever I can, honestly. I'll go down to the apron, I'll go below the yellow line, I'll do whatever. I just got to go for these wins. I definitely fumbled one, I think, uh, Kansas uh, to Micah. But, um, yeah, other things you can't get back, but yeah, I'm going to have to be more aggressive. Uh, do like I said, pretty much. And as for you, Mikey, you've led the standings pretty much all season uh, coming into the playoffs, but you haven't had as best of results as you would have liked the last couple of races. Uh, so you've led laps, though. Uh, what is the overall momentum for that 14 track moving in? Well, for me, I feel like even though I've had a pretty solid season so far with like results, but I really feel like this season kind of is a bit of a what if. Like I feel like this season I've had several races I can name off the top of my head that kind of slipped away that I thought I could have handled differently or could have maybe have gone a different way. I could have possibly have won like Charlotte, USA, Texas, and maybe a Dega race to throw it in there. And I just feel like. I've had chances at getting like a third win or maybe more wins, but I've just, the pieces just didn't fall together or just something happened that just prevented me from getting there. But um, still um, going into the playoffs though, um, we're just, ha we're hanging to Pocono and last season I won the stage and led the most laps and was up front most of the way before I kind of tossed it away on the long run late and, I feel pretty strong about Pocono. I just need to lay down a good qualifying lap to put myself up there and maintain track position and just kind of go about what I've been doing all season, just be up front and contend for stage wins and, of course, the win. I mean, just take it one race at a time here because I feel like this round, I'm not really feeling too strong about it really for based on, like, some of my tracks. I feel like Pocono is my best one on the um, in this round. And that's why I just need to think that, like, if I can just get past this round, I, I feel super strong about the ne the tracks in the next round with Kentucky, Dover, and Atlanta. I feel super strong about those. I just need to kind of survive in this round, not, like, mess up or get an incident because I feel really good about my chances if I can get out of this round to make it to the Final Four at Auto Club. So you brought up the schedule, the first round being Pocono, Bristol, and Chicago. Uh, out of those three, is there one that sticks out to you? Um, the, <laughs> really the main one that sticks out, um, I guess that could be a wild card to me, I feel, feel like would be Bristol. And it's kind of hard to believe to say it because I won there last year. But like I still would toss it as a wild card because... Last season, I thought I got a little lucky as pretty much almost every chaser got into an incident that kind of put them behind the wall. And I kind of had a minor one, but it was nothing like anything serious that like took me out of contention. But like, I just think that race is going to be a bit of a race of attrition and just maintain track position. Um, I mean, it's a concrete surface. I did win there last year. I kind of figured it out a little how to run it, but. It's just going to be about surviving there because I feel like that race is going to be very unpredictable in some ways. And with the way our short track racing has gone this season, you can never be too certain with uh, how it'll go at Bristol, a half mile 
with how fast you go. And even with the damage model, well, the new damage model, we've never run, uh, raced that um, at Bristol. I mean, you still can't be sure because I mean, if you take a pretty solid hit, the, it could still hurt your speed at a place like Bristol at high speed for a short track. And Ethan, as for you, you mentioned uh, you're focusing on getting to the championship and racing for it. So the three races before that are going to be the round of seven at Kentucky, Dover, and at Old Atlanta. Uh, is there anything there that uh, that's major that sticks out to you? Um, I remember, I think, one of my first few races of this league last season uh, at Dover. I was having a pretty decent run to the front, at least from the back, but... Um, like i've gotten a lot better now so i look forward to that track especially uh to go win that one and i thought kentucky i, I don't remember what happened i think i got booted out or something but i think i had some solid pace but yeah those two tracks specifically uh i have experience at those tracks so i expect to do really good there top three if hopefully a win uh if things go my way uh i have no experience at atlanta 08 so i have no idea what's gonna happen there but yep those two checks especially all right so now i'm going to ask you guys a question i asked uh, cam and brett when i recorded their interviews the other day uh, who do you think is going to be the biggest surprise throughout these playoffs uh, you guys of course seated first and second uh, do you think there's going to be any major development to join you guys throughout the rest of these playoffs and maybe upset some regular names Mikey, you go first. Okay. Um, well, between, like, Brett or Cam, I mean, like, I don't know what they said, but, I mean, I just, I mean, you never really know about what to expect in the playoffs. I mean, you never know. Like, it's a pretty, it's a pretty whole new ball game, um, especially, like, it's different from the regular season with how, like, like, this is it, like your season's on the line. But like, if I'm to make like a bold prediction or something, and this could come back to haunt me, but I'm, I'm starting to be a little nervous of one guy. I think that might possibly be at risk with like how their his season has gone with like some bad luck he's had. But I'm a little nervous about like how Justin Duran will approach this first round and in the playoffs. He's a great driver, and we know how good he is and how he's won in the past in ITPN, but he's kind of had some struggles really in some of these races this season. Like he's talked about it and I really think like he's a guy that I'm, that might need to be a uh, watch out. You might need to look out for that could possibly be in danger of getting knocked out in the first round as like ceiling for me like i really believe he can make it to the final four and even contend for the championship but i'm just kind of nervous with how his season has gone that he possibly could be in at serious risk to get knocked out in the first round well uh i guess for somebody who's into the playoffs right now um i could just want to race at kansas and he wasn't like terrible or anything, but um, he was he was solid during that race. He's got two wins this season, so I was thinking like you know if there's somebody who could have a, a pretty good run in the playoffs is uh, Micah. It, it would be a surprise for me, but yeah, he he seems to get those restarts down pretty well. So I think if it comes down to restarts in these races, then uh, and if he's up there then uh, we'll have a pretty good shot at it. Two drivers with two little bit different seasons, as Mikey just alluded to there. Uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Two drivers, top of the standings right now in the In the Pits News Truck Series playoffs as we enter the final stretch of races here in Season 4. Thanks for joining me, Michael Kruger, point leader, and Ethan Fonseca Moreno, second in the standings. Thanks, guys. Back here on Fastlane, joining me are four drivers from the Slide Driver Racing League, Jonathan Poker, Ethan Fonseca Moreno, Michael Kruger, and the point leader, Luke Knopp. Uh, Luke Knopp, I guess. Uh, guys, after... <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Luke can not I guess. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't stop laughing. Um, I like that meme more than Josh does. Anyway, um, <laughs> coming off of races at Nashville and the Daytona Road Course, I, I want to start with the contact that Ethan and Michael had uh, two weeks ago at Nashville. We didn't get to see it on the JCTV broadcast. So, uh, can you guys explain kind of what happened and how it derailed you guys' race? Um, well, uh, I had been sitting behind him for, I think, like 10 or more laps, something like that. Um, he was just pushing the whole time and uh, pretty much trying to hold me up, burning his stuff up right in front of me. And I was just trying to pass him because he, he was going quite a bit slower by the time I caught him. And he was just, you know, holding me up, going all over the racetrack. And, um, uh, I mean, he, he, he told me afterwards that, um, he said that he was just racing hard and trying to defend for the position. And I mean, honestly, I just don't understand racing hard that early, especially when we got guys that are behind us that are catching us. We could just, you know, help each other out and, you know, it, just let me buy, you know, cause so that we don't have to burn our stuff up and let the guys catch us so quickly. And we wouldn't we wouldn't have lost positions after crashing and all that, but um, yeah, I went. To, uh, I don't know what turn it was, but I pretty much just sent it to the inside because I pretty much wasn't having it anymore and just uh, I, uh, I just moved him out of the way, I guess. Uh, and then to the next corner, he just sent it in, and well, uh, everything you saw there is just happened. So, <laughs> um. I won't say it was intentional. Maybe, maybe not. But uh yeah, it just kind of ruined our race right there. I mean, we we had a good we had a we were battling for fifth, I think. Or fifth or sixth, something like that. We could have had better positions than when we were running at the end there, so uh I let them know that uh hopefully next time uh we won't be doing the stuff that we did that time cuz uh that was, that was pretty ridiculous what happened there. We lost out on points that we could have had at the finish there had we not had that contact. I mean, just kind of relation to the incidents between Thorpe and ETB at last well, um, at the Daytona Road Course. I mean, I was just kind of just sitting back, really, and we were kind of racing each other pretty hard, like all four of us, really, for position, really. We were all racing pretty hard. I was racing JP pretty hard at one point. And I was trying to actually kind of run down Thorpe and ETB. And then I saw them get together and I got close to them, but I just couldn't do anything. And then they got together on the second horseshoe and they just split left and right. And me and JP just got right by and just basically took fifth and sixth away and pretty much had locked up for the rest of the race after they got together and we kind of I kind of thought for a moment maybe it would happen um after ETB got into Thorpe in the first horseshoe and then I just didn't anticipate like both of them just split like go different ways when they got into each other like I thought maybe they would get into each other but I didn't think it'd be the next horseshoe they'd wreck and like yeah and then <laughs> I mean that's pretty much mostly what I got from that. Nashville was kind of one that I would just let slip away from me. Um, led the first 30 laps or so, I think, and then got a speeding penalty because I barely got touched entering the pits. So that derailed my night because I just got crashed back there with some of the squirrels. I'm not going to name names, but it's just when you get back there, you're it's pretty much game over. So um, had had just had to just salvage especially after um the restart crash got a bunch more damage there and then just salvaged the night p10 um not what i wanted but that was decent still kind of extended my points lead because johnny had a bad night as well um and then daytona yeah last night was pretty pretty just straightforward it was kind of boring to say the least um started fourth i think and quickly got up third and Stayed there the rest of the race. I made a few mistakes, and I think I had a shot for second, but just those mistakes held me back. But all in all, third place is good again, and then um, have, I think, a 160-point lead over second place. So 
two races left in the regular season. Um, try to rack up as many bonus points as I can because I think the playoff grid is set off of bonus points. So just going to try to lead laps, get zero X races, um, try to get a few poles. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for the playoffs to start. And Jonathan Parker, a lot happened in the Daytona road course race for you. Getting spun out lap one. I talked a little bit about the incident you had with Kruger later on. Somehow you were able to fight your way up to fifth position through all that all. Uh, what was the race like from your point of view before we talk about Nashville? Oh, I don't know where to start. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just the same dumb racing that's been happening all year. <laughs> I mean, it's everyone thinking they can win on lap one or they can win in the first quarter of the race, and that's not it's not how it works ever, actually. I, we just... Listen, I, I know Dylan made a mistake, but he's good enough, and we were both good enough to run top three that race. He was fast after that. My car was a little more banged up. I couldn't really get back through the field as quickly as he could, but, I mean, we both... I, I think I showed it in qualifying, and I think he showed it in the race that he was more than capable of running top three, and instead we just pissed our way, our races, in the first two corners. It's stupid, and that's been happening all year. Just... Throughout the entire field. Um, and I guess that was on display later on. Because, I mean, the whole group, I think it was Michael, Thorpe, Ethan, Blaine, Kruger, and I. We were all just kind of, like, pretty close to each other. And we'll fight, like, really hard for fifth place and just watch everyone walk away. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just, I guess I'm from a, I just think differently. I just think like it's the early 2000s and i shouldn't i should just dive in every single corner chop everyone's nose off whatever it is but yeah it cost me again because i've been running to a lot this season and that's a big reason why i haven't been able to get the results i wanted but it means it happens in the regular season and it doesn't happen in the playoffs i don't really care well going back a week to the Nashville Super Speedway race, uh, the all-time jinx on JCTV where Josh Capono says you could have an issue and anything could happen in the race and then immediately spin the tires and your night is pretty much over. Uh, what We didn't get to talk to you on that broadcast, so your th opinions of that incident and the night at hand at Nashville. Christian Pacheco turned left on a restart. That's what happened. Don't use three inches of net code to try and excuse it. That's what f happened. He turned left on a restart, and there was no wheel spin. I didn't get wheel spin. He didn't. He turned left, and that's what he said. He was just trying to be on my door because he, his field of view was shit. He, he doesn't use a look left button, so he didn't know where he was in relation to my car, and he turned left, and he, he wrecked me. It wasn't intentional. He didn't intentionally turn left to cause a wreck. Just wanted to get on my door because he can't see, and I don't mean that in a mean way. He literally cannot see because of where he is positioned, and he doesn't use a look left button. So I don't... I mean... And I've told him, I've seen him do that in official races. And I told him not to like exactly what to do. And he still doesn't do it. And he caused a huge fucking pileup. I, th that, and that was a race. I mean, Luke, unfortunately, had some some shenanigans happen first 30 laps of the race. But I handed the lead. And from the practice that we had done earlier in the day, I was if I can get in the clean air, I knew I was going to have a like a ginormous shot to win that race. I, it's a pretty good track. And I really like it. And I was just. Trying to manage, it was gap managing. I really wasn't pushing that hard once I got out front. I was just managing my tires. If we got a long run, it was going to be a lot of fun for me. And yeah, that was, uh, I was really pissed about that. But I don't know. It's, it's, once again, it's bad luck. I feel like I'm a broken record. I've had, I, I made a mistake at Auto Club. It cost me the win. That's my fault. But I mean, the rest of the races where I'm running up front, I kind of had a chance. It's not really been much I could do to stop it from affecting my finishes so i just oh, i don't really <laughs> i'm sorry <Blue. laughs> you know, I, I don't know it's i guess i i i gotta get lucky i don't know i don't know how how do you solve it adam i don't know how to solve it i don't know how to solve it but everyone looked at the three inches of net code and said, let's blame the net code instead of the person who turned left on a restart. And we'll just say it was a racing incident. 
Every iRacer does that. They see net code, they just try to use that to blame the whole situation instead of take of accountability for their fucking actions. Bullshit. Take some accountability. Like I made him do in the voice chat. I'll, you, at, at, at first he was like, yeah, I turned left. Then he looked at me and he went, oh, net code. And I went, uh, go fuck yourself. You still turn left. Don't turn left on a restart. Know how far away you are from the car. If you're not on my door, you don't ha even have to be on my door. A quarter of a car length. That's all you need to side draft, be on someone's door for a restart. That's all you need is a quarter of a car length. Anything more is egregious and you're just, you you know what it is. Don't 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 put yourself in a position to do something stupid like that. Love you, Christian. Don't be stupid. Well, I didn't know any of that happened, so I'm glad I got to figure out <laughs> your side and pretty much put this piece together, though. Uh, explains a lot, Jonathan. Thank you. Moving on, I don't know who wants to. <laughs> I don't know who wants to pick it up, but there was just at the time of this recording two races left in the regular season. Uh, so North Wilkesboro and then Chicago Land in a couple weeks uh, after the All Star break. So, what is uh, the expectation here? The last two races, you guys all in the top six right now on the points, trying to lock yourselves up into these playoffs. Um, I'll go first. Um, you know, I'm not as fast as my competitors, so if I can't rate, if I, if I can't beat them, I gotta wreck them. So I might as well just do that. I think that's the last thing I gotta do now. That's that's pretty much what I gotta do. Luke is too fast. JP is too fast. I mean, I'm. Running out of options, so yep. There we we're, go. We're getting, we're getting to that point. So, uh, yep. That's all I got. There we go. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I did math last night, and I'm locked into the playoffs. So that's cool. Um, but just uh, like Ethan said, probably just gonna have to wreck a few people. Um, <laughs> I know a, a few people who want to wreck me. I'm sure Ethan just explained one of those cases. Um, so if we get wrecked, we get wrecked. I mean, Call me Johnny Parker. <laughs> um, I'll, you go, Mikey. I'll carry it from here. Um, well, like with the last two ra uh, races left in the regular season, um, North Wilkesboro and Chicago Land, um, I'm only like 100 points ahead of Pacheco, so I'm kind of thinking points a little bit to make sure I get in the playoffs. I mean, I have a good cushion. I just got to make sure to get away with a decent race at Wilkesboro. Um, Kind of also to follow along with what some of these guys said earlier about like possibly getting back at some guys. I mean, if someone does something dirty to me at North Wilkesboro, I might have to dish it back to them and test out the damage model, uh, the new Xfinity damage model, and um, show them some payback or whatever. Um, and I don't know if there's a better place to do it than Wilkesboro <laughs> with it being a short track. Um, and then just Chicago Land, I just need a decent race, and just I'm in the playoffs. Um, I mean, I just need to put together some decent finishes these next two races, and I'll be in. Um, I mean, just nothing flashy. Um, really, just need to get some good finishes, top tens at least would be nice. And I just need to keep an eye on my competitors and just stay ahead of them. Yeah, um, I just. Let's try and get back on track, really, is what I want to do the last two races. Uh, do whatever I can to get into victory lane because, I mean, the regular season championship's locked up, basically. It's not mathematically locked up, but it might as well be. And I'm basically, once again, it's not mathematical, but I'm basically locked into the playoffs. So just kind of try and not necessarily go balls to the walls, but, you know, just if you can go for the win, do that strategy, do that. And I'm like these other three fucking clowns i'm not gonna just go out there and wreck people <laughs> that's a great way to like ruin a league but that doesn't mean like i mean if someone cuts cuts down my nose i'm i won't cut them a break because i've been cutting breaks all season and i mean where where has it got at me so i mean if you race me like a tool i might race you like a tool but i'm not gonna go out there and intentionally wreck people because that's that's fucking stupid but there we go <laughs> but <laughs> hey I'll just try and get back on track. I mean, I really like Chicago. I, had, I got my first side job win there. I ran good there, and then the Pitts News, Alex Kerfan had one hell of a drive to to beat me there. So, uh, my hats off to Kerfan. He's awesome. Um, so, but I ran good there that day, too, in the truck. So, 
it's a pretty good track for me, so I'll try and try and do whatever I can there to be as fast as I can, get ready for the playoffs, and um, just try to have some fun. Let's have some fun with it, not take it too seriously, I guess. All right, anyone else have any uh, other thoughts here on Season 11 of the Slide Job Racing League? Um, you know, go, go off, sis. Oh, my God. So, there's this one guy in particular. Yeah, go that fucking off. We've, we've never really seen side to side. Si- side to side. <laughs> <laughs> eye to eye is what you're trying eye to say? To yeah, we're, there's this one guy who, that we've never really seen eye to eye. And, you know, I don't think I've, I mean, I've raced him hard. But I've never done stuff he has to me. And it goes back to, I think there's a few races last season. And then at Talladega last season in the playoffs, he threw a dumb block on lap seven and killed half the field. And he thought it was okay. He ruined his playoffs chances. He was going to make the final four, but he ruined that. And then now he's just going on like a revenge arc, he thinks, of trying to race everyone as hard as he can. And it's clearly not getting him anywhere. So, Michael Thorpe, if you're watching this, man. Oh, my God. If you do anything dumb to me this season, I'm sorry, you're you're getting the hook. Because you clearly have a problem with me, and I've never done anything to you except throw a block that you couldn't get past me. So, you know, race me, race me hard, and I'm gonna race you hard. But if uh, you bump me out of the way, I'm sorry, bud. But you're gonna you're gonna see how that new damage model works. Oh, that feels good. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, you you spanked <laughs> him hard, <laughs> Daddy. Do either of you two want to go before me? Oh, Adam. Do you, do, Ethan, do you have anything? I Mikey, mean, you got anything? I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> Mikey, you can go. really, what I got, like, I mean, I don't have much, really. I'm just kind of, like, kind of lucky that I've got a, I'm, like, top 10 in the playoffs right now with two races to go. Like, <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to run full time in the series. I just kind of just raced it and just had a little practice going into the races. I'm just somehow pulling my way in the playoffs right now. Like I, I just didn't expect to kind of be in this spot to possibly be in the playoffs in SGRL, my first full-time season. I didn't, I didn't really picture it. I didn't really think I'd kind of be in position, but I mean, I'm here and I don't really expect to do much in the playoffs, but I'm just, just glad to be here though. Nonetheless, in my first season. Um, I want to add that if I don't win the championship this season, I'm retiring. That's it. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Um, because I got other things to do. That's it. Okay. Understandable. I don't really oh. have much to say, but I'm just stupid. I just made a dumb mistake there. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I mean, I know it was a mistake. You're not gonna like this, but you race a lot like Ross Chastain. You know what? I actually b- agree with that. You, I'm not like, even you're like you're like I'm not even watermelon farmer, watermelon farmer. I, I gotta feed my family, I gotta feed my kids, I gotta go for that gap, I gotta block him right here. <laughs> it's, it's like that's not what you should have did in that situation. <laughs> Cause like I know I know you let me go a little bit, but I still had to like work to get beside you. It's pretty tough at that track because we were going way too fast in our turn one, first of all. As mm-hmm. bad as that front that chicane is on the NASCAR version. It makes sense because <laughs> this car suck. Like there was a couple times, Mike. I don't know if you noticed. I made up a good like six tenths in that breaking zone alone on you and Blaine. I was like, "What are Blaine. they doing in here?" Blaine's oh party. yeah. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> dude. JP, if you were in my chat, you would have been constantly hear me talk about how frustrating it was trying to pass Blaine. I was faster <laughs> than for like half the run. That is Ethan Fonseca Moreno, Michael Kruger, Jonathan Parker, and Luke Nup joining us on Fast Lane here talking about the end of the slide job racing week season 11, regular season, getting ready for the All-Star race on Tuesday, and the start of the playoff beginning end of the month.